Okay, so on this video, or in this video, we're going to talk about 14.3 and 14.4, so relationship between KP and KC, as well as manipulating K. So let's get into it. Um, this is the third video I've recorded today. After many failed practices, I'm going slightly insane, so I apologize um, in advance. Hopefully this is all right. <laughs> um, so the relationship between KP and KC, if you just watched the last video, um, you saw me calculate a KP is the last thing. We also calculated a KC value. It's just the difference between, are we talking about concentration and the solutions, or are we talking about partial pressures and gases? So I want you guys um, to think about, um, way back to the beginning of the semester. So we talked about PV equals NRT. All right, we're good. So PV equals NRT. Or if I rearrange it, I could say P equals moles over volume times RT. Or I could say pressure equals molarity times RT. Now in this way, you guys can see that pressure and concentration are directly related. How these are potentially going to change is dependent on um, the moles. So values may differ depending on the number of moles of gaseous reactants and products. So that's an important point to think about when we are converting between KPs and KC values. Now I'm gonna show you one example, um, just kind of going through this, briefly. I'm not going to derive the entire relationship and then I'm going to um, I'm just going to show you an example and then I'm going to generalize the relationship on the next slide. So if I think about 2N2O5 gas is in equilibrium with N4O10 gas, we can write that pressure of N2O5 is equal to my moles of N2, oops, moles of N2O5 over volume times RT, and that would be equal to my concentration of N2O5 times RT. Now, because of this relationship, we can directly relate our, con or our um, K of concentration and our K of pressure, our KC and our KP. I'm gonna give you a general relationship on the next page. So if we think about the reaction, general reaction of A of A plus B of B is in equilibrium with C of C, plus D of D, and then I'm gonna give that KP, but say I wanted to calculate the KP and I only had um, concentrations, all right? So if I wanna calculate KP from concentrations, I can do that given the relationship that I just showed you on the last page. Concentration C, RT raised to the C, concentration of D, RT raised to the D, divided by concentration of A, RT raised to the A, concentration of B, RT raised to the B. What's true is that I can pull out those concentrations and make it look just like a KC. So concentration of C to the C power, concentration of D to the D power over concentration of A to the A power, and then concentration of B to the B power. Multiply by RT, to the power of, oh shoot, I didn't leave enough, stuff, enough space. Let's try to fit this in. So this is going to be the RT 
multiply by each other and then to the power of, and I'm gonna have to put this down here, okay? This is gonna be my moles of C plus D, so moles of product minus my moles of reactant, all right? What this looks like um, and what I need to think about, this is to remind, rem, reminder this goes in here into the exponent, but this is moles product minus moles reactant. So I can do, or I can say Kp equals Kc, so remember Kc is really this thing that I wrote here, times Rt delta n my final moles minus my initial moles, my moles of my products minus my moles of reactants, okay? That works out really nicely. So when I do that in our previous example, oh, I guess we didn't really talk about that, so let's ignore that. Um, do you want to know what R you use? This R should be 0 0.08. 206 liters times ATM, because we're going to get it in, um, or we're going to be talking about pressures, right? Divided by mole times Kelvin. Okay, now let's do an example. All right, and in this example, I am going to show you guys, I'm going to look at one thing first, so just ignore me for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example and then I'm gonna give you a top hat question. I was just checking your top hat, so, okay. So, the first example that I'm gonna give you is when I give you a Kp and I want you guys to calculate what the Kc is. So I've given you a chemical equation. Notice that all what I have to figure out is my moles that I started with and the moles that I ended with, right? So I started with two moles, I ended with one mole. Because of that, when I do Kp equals Kc Rt power of n, I'm going to end up with a delta n equal to, I ended with one mole, started with two moles, so one minus two, to give me a negative one delta n. What I'm solving for is Kc, so I can go ahead and rearrange for Kc if I want to. I can say Kp divided by Rt delta n equals my Kc value. So I know that my Kp is 7.3 divided by R, and I just told you the R that you use is 0 Remember, K is unitless, so I don't have to worry about them. And then I do have to make sure that I use the right temperature, though, right? So remember that I'm in a Kelvin. I want to use the um, universal gas constant, R. So make sure you do temperature in Kelvin. 523. Ooh. I forgot to give you the temperature. So this should be at 250 degrees C. And you convert 523 degrees Kelvin, take this whole thing to the negative one. This is going to give you your Kc. You're going to end up with a Kc equal to 313. Okay, now what I want you guys to do in top hat or your turn is if I have Kc for a given reaction, um, what's my Kp? So Kp is going to be equal to my Kc value, 2.8 times 10 to the negative nine times 0 0.08206 multiplied by, and I did give you the temperature here, this is 30 degrees, so make sure that you convert 303. And then I ended with two moles, two, but I started with four. So two minus four for my delta n is gonna have me ending with a negative two. Take this to the negative two, and that's your KP value. Enter in your answer into top hat. Da, da, da. So make this in red, top hat. Okay. 
So that's our KP and KC and how they're related to each other. So I, I did want to take a second and just kind of recalibrate us. Wait, where are we right now? Think about um, what we've learned and how this kind of relates to the stuff we've previously learned. So we've introduced another K. It's a big K. It's a capital K. Why are there so many Ks? And what is K versus K? Well, we've talked about how it relates to the rates, right? And we talked about how it's K forward over K reverse, right? From the last lecture. Hopefully you remember that. Things that we have thought about for reactions is how much energy do we get out or have to put into a reaction? So one energy in, out. That's our delta G value. How quickly can we get that work out? That's dependence on the kinetics, right? Or our little k. That was the kinetics chapter. And then three, when will the reaction each re reach equilibrium? Essentially, when will it stop working? When does it reach a steady state and is no longer doing anything? That's what we're talking about now. <laughs> Annabeth. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is my daughter, Annabeth. You wanna come say hi? Come here. She's just playing outside. It's Sunday night, I'm recording lectures. Ugh. Can you wave and say hi? Hi. Hi. No. I'm honey. I love you, bub. I'm honey. What's her name? I know. I, it's just us on the screen. I'm just recording it for students and Brian's in the background too. All right, I gotta finish this lecture, okay guys? I love you very much, I'll be done soon. You all right? Sorry about that. She's tripped. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Bubba. I love you. It's going to be okay. I'm almost done. I'm sure that will happen in multiple videos. All right. So when will the reaction each reach equilibrium? Or when is the reaction going to stop working? So we have reactants are in equilibrium with products. And we have K is equal to products. Over reactants. We can think about this as a teeter-totter, right? I've kind of shown you that. Um, if you want to think about it, actually drawn as a teeter-totter. I know, I have mad drawing skills. And then, and Avi, you stand on teeter-totters. <laughs> oh, this guy's kind of scary. He's like, I'm up here and I'm stuck and I'm reached to equilibrium and how do I get down? Maybe he's really scared of jumping. I don't know. Okay, so this would be a, situation with equilibrium where we ended with making way more of our products than having our reactants done at the end, right? So remember that if K is big, big number, more products, and if K is a tiny number, we have more reactants. All right, we can also manipulate K. So um, we can think about if I have the K for a forward reaction, how do I get the K for a reverse reaction? And we would do that by if I have two and two O five is in equilibrium with N four O ten. I wanna do the reverse. I know I've talked about the reverse reaction, but this is the first time I've really drawn it. We have N four O ten in equilibrium now with 2 and 205. 
And if we draw the Ks for both of these, and these are both Kcs, okay, or in concentrations, the concentration of N4, O10, divided by concentration N2, O5, to the second. If you think about the Kc for the second one, we now have N2, O5 to the second, over N4, O10. Hopefully, you can see that those are just the reciprocal of each other, right? So K forward equals the reciprocal of the reverse. If the forward reaction is favor, the reverse reaction is not, which makes sense, right? And vice versa. We can also change um, the reaction equivalence. So say, I want to take um, so change equivalence. Pretend there was a U there the whole time. All right. So if I have N2 gas plus 3 H2 gas goes to 2 NH3 gas. I want to write the K for this. This would be a KP. And this would be P with NH3. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, there's a, a crack in my iPad screen from my daughter dropping it. Uh, <laughs> and I got right on the screen. Let's move this up a little bit. NH3. And then this needs to be squared over P of N2 and then P of H2. And that'll be cubed. So say I multiply this whole reaction by 2. Well, what does that do to my K? Well, you can imagine that it's going to change all your coefficients, right? I like this in yellow. And then I'm going to write in in red that now I would have two and two. I would have six. Go to having two. Go to having six. Go to having four. So that's just going to change my KP to now be P of NH3 to the fourth power or P of N2 to the second power times P of H2 to the sixth. Now you can probably compare those two KP values and tell that all you did for KP, say KP1, so KP1, since I multiplied the reaction by two, what I do take it to the second power to give me kp2 because i multiplied the reaction by two okay so if you multiply a reaction you take it to the exponent now there's one more thing that we can do we can combine different reactions and combine their k's so this is like hess's law we can combine reactions Kc values to get an overall Kc value. Okay, so if we think about combining two different reactions, reaction one is going to be A plus B is in equilibrium with 2C. And then say we have reaction two, where we have 2C plus B is in equilibrium with 2D. 
If I want to combine these two, we know how to do that. My two C's are going to cancel out. I'm going to end with A plus 2B is in equilibrium with 2D. We want to think about what happened to the K values in that situation. We had KC1 is equal to C squared for A to B. KC2 is equal to D squared over, and I'm going to include those C's that did cancel out, right? C squared, and you'll see why, because it really is there in this one. We haven't canceled them out yet. If I want to combine those two, what I do is I multiply KC1 times KC2 to equal K overall. So if I do that, I'm going to just go ahead and take that down here and say that if I have C squared, so this is KC1 that I'm writing down right now, C squared, restriction A, restriction B, multiply that by D squared over C squared times concentration B. What happens, <laughs> what happens is my C squared cancel out when I add those two together. And I end with D squared. Man, I'm getting tired. Okay, I'm gonna end soon, I swear. Over concentration A times concentration B. Okay, so what happened there is I multiplied the two together and I ended up getting the same expression that I would get if I were to actually add them together and then write the K value from that new added together equation. All right, so. Um, to summarize the three main ways in which you can manipulate K, what we are talking about doing is if I have the reverse reaction, it's the reciprocal of the original forward. If I multiply a reaction by a value n, k is raised to the nth power. That's the second example that we did. And then if I want to get k overall, what is happening? How is this possible? Hold on. Somehow I have an additional participant in my room right now. So I am going to finish and then deal with that in a second. But sorry that interrupted it. So if I want to um, multiply reaction nk, we raise it to the nth power. And if I want to get k overall, That's going to be K1 multiplied by K2 times K3 and then I could do that for as many reactions as I added together. So that's how we manipulate K. Okay, So those are all of the things and um, just so you do know you also have a um, top hat question now about manipulating K. And your exact question is, if I have K for the forward reaction, how can I get K for the reverse reaction? Should be able to answer that based on what you just did, all right? So once again, this is top hat. Okay, all right. Um, that is it for this video. We are done. Stop recording. Bye, everyone.